asshole sit over here. <laughs> you were sitting here, weren't you? I was. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> All right, then. Let's get started. I'm Eden. I'm doing a presentation on my sophomore capstone, which is, of course, censorship and media. I have 53 hours, 33 minutes into this. I hate round numbers. My jargon question for this uh, project was what are the pros and cons of censorship media? And my sustainable development goal was to report quality education because censorship can be used to hinder education, which is a bad thing. I want to do this, uh, to do this project because I find censorship to be a very interesting topic. Genre pieces, which I have over by my showcase, and you all like to take a look at this, are I have argumentative essay uh, about taking a look at the rating system because that has been updated in quite some time. I have an informative essay about the rating system. I have an informative uh, essay about how censorship can be handled and different ways it can be handled. And I have a skit about the rating system. You can't tell it's a point look at the rating system. What can't be shown on regular TV? Well, uh, content, that is considered, content that is considered indecent, which depicts uh, sexual violent or graphic content, cannot be shown between the times of 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. There's a very real possibility of children being viewed. And content that is considered obscene, which depicts sexual violent graphic content in a manner that does not have any political, artistic, or scientific value, cannot be shown on broadcast television at all which is quite frankly good. What's the difference between normal broadcast television and streaming services? Well, normal broadcast television is funded by our good friend Uncle Sam, and as such, Uncle Sam has control over regular broadcast television. However, streaming services, which are privately funded, are not controlled by the government. They are controlled by whoever privately owns and funds them. For example, Netflix can put whatever it wants on Netflix, and the US government can't really say anything about it. My uh, expert resource for this project was Alejandro Alvarez, who is a journalist who worked in uh, Hong Kong during the time where the Chinese government decided to crack down on censorship, and several news outlets that existed for a very long time were just unceremoniously and abruptly shut down. And a lot of the people work, the journalists working in that country had to change professions or just outright <coughs> leave the country for fear of arrest. Horrible, horrible thing. What are the pros of censorship in the media? Well, uh, it can help limit hate speech, which is good because it helps limit racism, segregation, homophobia, all that nasty stuff. Uh, it can help protect children, which is really the primary purpose of it, in my opinion. Uh, again, going back to uh, decent content might be, might be shown between 6 a.m. and 10 p.m. is for protecting children. And another good reason is it limits disturbing content. You, obviously, in the age of the internet and social media and all that, can't prevent stuff that shouldn't be out there from being out there for everyone and anyone to see. But censorship can help us limit that content from being out there. What are the cons of censorship media? It can help limit free speech, uh, which is, I shouldn't really have to explain, that's a bad thing. Uh, which also, limiting free speech also leads into the other negatives, which are being used to direct public belief in a specific direction. For example, if you have a group of people who use one uh, news outlet, then they'll get all their information from the news outlet. If that news outlet is censoring certain information or telling certain information in a specific way, it can influence the entire group to believe something that is less than true. Uh, it can be used to help limit general knowledge as well. Uh, for example, if no one's talking about something, then people won't learn about something. It's a very simple concept. Uh, it can help weave a false narrative. Uh, for example, again, going back to a single group of people and a single source for their information, if that information is uh, false or particularly censored, 
and that can help uh, make people believe something that isn't true or isn't fully true. Which leads quite nicely into my next little bit. Russia. Right now in Russia, obviously all of you should probably know what's going on right now. Russia is making some very false claims to their people, saying stuff like how, how the radicalist Ukrainians are uh, controlled by neo-Nazis, evil violent people who are a threat to the good people in Russia, even though Russia is a much larger and much more dangerous military power in Ukraine. Uh, and it's, they're essentially saying what's happening to Ukraine is what Ukraine is trying to do to Russia, which is malarkey. And a lot of what Russia is doing is actually having a very negative impact on the people of Russia who really haven't done anything wrong. Because uh, a lot of the rest of the world is cutting off the country of Russia from supplies and money and the, as such the Russian economy and Russian resources are not doing well and the Russian people are suffering. Now, it sucks, but it is what it is. Conclusion, censorship is a tool. Is censorship good or bad? It's like asking if a hammer is good or bad. You can use a hammer to put nails and stuff like explosive, or you can use a hammer to bludgeon someone over the head. Censorship's the same way. You can use it to help protect people, to help keep information that should be out there from being out there, or censorship can be used to help prevent information that should be out there from being out there. It all depends on how it's used. Sources, any questions? Jasper. Really, but generally speaking, that was not a good time for censorship, or it was a very good time for censorship. It was not a good time for people getting accurate information because if your only source is the paper that comes out every week, then whatever the paper doesn't talk about, you don't know about. Any other questions? Yes, Jasper. Not very much, but uh, generally speaking, it's the same concepts of modern time censorship, just it was way worse back. Usually, censorship is pretty much always worse during the war times. Ian? So, who's in charge of the rating system, and how do they really judge how something gets rated? <laughs> Want to know something funny? We don't know. The people behind the rate, the, the committee of people who are responsible for rating movies, for example, is completely anonymous. That is not something I'm happy about. It's a stupid. Any other questions? Nick. How do you feel about, uh, like on live television, if you say a certain word, uh, I can't say it. Public. Some <laughs> words that are expletive, you could be faced with like a two hundred fifty thousand dollar fine. How do you feel about that? Now that's just kind of stupid. Like, yes, there is stuff that shouldn't really be said on live television, but in the end, it doesn't really matter all that much. It certainly doesn't matter twenty five hundred dollars worth. Of it. Jasper. Actually, well, that could also depend on your definition of censorship. Like, is keeping uh, people's names and faces out of interviews censorship? Yes. Does that help them? Yes. Is keeping private information uh, private considered censorship? It can be, I suppose, and that's also helping people. 
Oh, yes, there are definitely ways to see your house with practical people other than just living on a seat. <laughs> If you could change anything about what is and isn't censored, do you think you would based on the rating system? The rating system specifically? Very much so. <laughs> First off, I'm going to be anonymous because that's just stupid. <laughs> I don't know what else I'm going to change, but definitely that. <laughs> Kendall? What first got you interested in this topic? Well, I hated censorship and I thought it was evil. Oh, no. <laughs> Dosh, is it? Dosh. Uh, Dosh. In your opinion, do you feel that uh, censorship will just cut into our freedom of speech more and more into the future? It can. It also can't. That's predicting the future isn't a specialty of mine. It also depends on whether or not we go into another war. For example, if the U.S. gets involved in the war with Ukraine, probably because during wartime, censorship is always worse. If we don't, Unless something happens to provoke freedom of speech getting uh, censored more, then I don't really think freedom of speech is going to get censored more. Jasper? Was communist propaganda censored during the time of Vietnam? I have no idea. Gideon? Uh, do you think they should change the uh, movie rating system closer to what uh, they have for video games with like PETI and ESRB? Yes, yes, God, uh, yes. So for those of you who don't know, the video game rating system, is controlled by major gaming companies because they know what they're talking about. The movie rating system is controlled by the government, which doesn't know what it's talking about. So movie systems should be controlled by big movie people. And television censorship should be controlled by big television people. It's rather simple. Nick? Wouldn't that bring up the possibility of big companies crowding together and just clouding out smaller companies and censoring movies that they make so they can profit more? Come on, Nick. That already happens. Jasper. Will you be using any of these questions brought to you tonight to further your research? Probably not.